Welcome to Grey Primer, a show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this episode I'm unboxing, building, and reviewing the Orc Stompa kit from Warhammer 40,000. It's a big bucket of a thing, thick armor, bristling with daka, crawling with grots, and just full of fun. Let's go check it out, right now. <laughs> Gotta take a run up at this one. Orc Stompa. Look at this thing. Just gonna put this uh, instruction manual off to the side. Would you look at the size of these panels? Like, that's as big as my hand. That's too cool. And all the little metal plates, all the riveted bits and pieces, just random battlefield junk that they found knocking around. You gotta love orc engineering. Really hard. <laughs> it's, it's just so hard to come to terms with, considering how small so much of this hobby is. That you get sections that are as big as this, like almost as large as a side plate. What an absolute monster this thing is gonna be. And as you would expect, there's a lot of orc iconography here, lots of spiky metal bits. And there's even some armor plate here that has battle damage. Which, I don't know if I've seen a lot of that with Warhammer kits, battle damage. Normally it's up to us to damage the things in, but it's kind of cool to see it here. And then there's a collection of grots, and there's an orc there as well. And I can't wait to see sort of where they all fit into the, the overall picture of just how huge this is. At least they help to give it scale as well. And orcs wouldn't be orcs without some significant bombs and daca. And it doesn't look like it's in short supply here. Would you look at the size of this gun? Like you could fit a grot into the barrel of this thing. And oh, oh look at this. But everything else here, it just gets me so excited to get this built. And how do I do that? Well, I check out this surprisingly small, there's only a few pages to this thing, instruction manual. And it's, of course, done uh, in the classic style of there being no numbers. But thankfully, there, there aren't actually a lot of components here. So it's one of those guys where you have to identify everything just by the look of it, comparing it to what's in front of you in the picture. And uh, that can be problematic if the kit is overly complex. This one is not. This has just got very large pieces uh, to click together. And yeah, it gets to a point here at the end where it's just like, here's a bunch of icons, here's a bunch of spikes. Put them wherever you want, and I am fine with that. Amazing. Okay, I can't wait any longer. I gotta go get it built, and I'll be right back. So here it almost is. Almost, because it's just over there out of frame. But I wanted to pause and talk about this. The single worst instruction manual of all time. For one of the nicest kits of all time, which you will see in a minute. When you're dealing with a kit like this, that's all these huge components, that's fine you can you know you know this huge bit of back this base plate that's all easy easy to identify on the sprue not a bother dry fit them see how you're getting on when you get into the smaller components things get a little trickier and when you get i mean look at this like just there are so many parts that look like other parts but even that is fine it's here where things get completely bananas it's not even showing you where those parts connect. A lot of them are connecting on the other side of, of like this component here. Like look at all these tiny little wriggly bits of hosing that look very much like the next bit of hosing, but are actually designed just to go into one specific part on this chainsaw thing. Absolute madness. It left me sort of looking at it for quite some time working out which hose was which and which hose went where. Anyway, time for an update games workshop. That would be much appreciated. So now let's move from one of the worst manuals to one of the best kits as I drag this huge, 
huge kit into frame. Look at how glorious this is. That is just one of my favorite looking kits I've ever put together. It is just full of humor. Look at this guy like with his hammer banging on the rocket to make it go faster. It's full of humor, it's full of detail. It's full of like little hidden secrets, the engineer or whatever here on this little ladder at the back. Access panel in behind there. You've got this little walkway with dials and sprockets and all sorts of things and someone drilling holes in it there. This little guy hanging off some piping um, up into the underskirts there. You can see where the, the, these articulated feet are. Lots of little hatches with we Gretchen looking out of them. And this thing is just packed full of fun, packed full of detail. I think this is a utterly glorious kit. This weapon up here too. Not a huge amount of options for moving the limbs around and things. I tried to keep the, the main gun pointing forward. I raised the chain sword up a bit and had this guy dangling precipitously from it. I thought that would be cool if he was in the middle of maintaining it, maybe standing on this little platform when the, the, you know, the driver decided to raise the arm. We even got one up in the crow's nest up there and lots of scope for adding, you know, battered metal panels and spikes and things like that. Tons of orc iconography in this, so I attached a little bit of jewelry chain around the barrel of the main weapon here and then just super glued some of those icons onto the chain. So it hangs down as a little bit of a, um, a banner here. And I thought that worked very well. So that's just sort of free swing in there. Uh, for this build, I, I left the head, just I just blue tacked it in place there, so it's got a bit of wobble on this front plate as well. I left that blue tacked on. As I said, this is for a friend, so I wanted to make sure that they were able to get underneath everything to get it painted and stuff. So when I first opened the box, I thought this was going to be such an easy build. I'd be wrapped in an hour. I'd probably spend more time waiting for the primer to dry than I would do building it. That was not the case. This was a marathon building session and largely just because of the way the instruction manual is laid out. Uh, and I wanted to make sure it was right. So just took a bit of extra time. Was it worth it? 100% it was worth it. There's so many times when I look at big orc machines, I think of them as upturned flower pots with just gubbins stuck to them. This feels like a huge lumbering weapon of war. And just imagine the billowing fumes coming out of these smokestacks as well as this thing is just grinding and growling and screaming its way across the battlefield. So that's it, the Orc Stampa. It was horrible to build, but it's beautiful when built. Thanks so much for choosing to spend time with me today. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe, switch on notifications, do all the things. And until the next time, take care and bye bye.